and hopefully other people can get on. Um, you don't, what do we need, five for a quorum? So, I guess we do have to wait ever so, uh, you know, and hopefully we get one more on. What's everybody think of uh, all the fun things that have been going on at Walpole over the last two weeks? Let's not discuss that. <laughs> well, you know, we're not opening the meeting yet.
to just I'll see what everybody thinks about the reopening of the restaurants and whatnot, but mostly the EDC mission, if anybody has an idea as to how we can move forward with that, because I really want to try to push this meeting with the um, selectmen as soon as possible. I don't believe things are getting any better right now um, in terms of the functionality of the group. Um, and as we've spoken about before, I don't think it's going to get better until we have that meeting. So. Um, if anybody has any thoughts or has put any thought into uh, what we ought to be doing, I'll take some notes and then formulate some sort of a, the beginnings of a document that, that we can have. I know we talked about this last time, um, but I think we really have to start putting some thought into it so we're prepared to at least answer to what the selectmen think they want us to do. And, you know, who knows? We might have a lot of um ideas that match up and that line up and um, we might think of things that they haven't and they might think of things that we haven't so just to have some sort of a maybe a punch list or a or a mission list that we can put together would be helpful in my opinion um who came on down the bottom that's only showing a phone number and is muted if you're trying to talk Anybody recognize that number? Yeah, probably John. Yeah, it could be John. He uh, might be. He might uh, be on. I was, I was a few few minutes late. Um, are there any updates on what's going on with Ashley and the town and the selectmen and anything I missed? Or are we still just waiting to get before the selectmen have a conversation? Well, as far as I know, we're still just waiting to get in front of the selectmen to have the conversation. Um, when before the previous meeting you know when we got the notice that you know Ashley was going to hold off on joining the meetings until we had that selectman meeting you know I had talked to Jim and and he said that you know just to keep things working he was going to try to get her to be a part of these meetings until we had that meeting and you know I gave her some assurances gave him some assurances that you know this is a professional board and you know, we've all discussed it and certainly no one wants to make her feel, you know, anything other than part of the team. And, you know, knowing all of you, um, I know that's the case. So I felt comfortable saying that to Jim, that, you know, no one has anything at all against her and that, you know, we'll do everything that we can to, to make her feel comfortable and, and included. Um, he said he would have her on the meetings until our meeting, but the fact that she isn't here um makes me think that you know she he either got pushback or i know that you know the whole world's going crazy right now and he's got bigger things on his plate so maybe it hasn't even come up again so i'll give him the benefit of the doubt on that one um but it doesn't change the fact that we're kind of out here on our own and that you know we can't obviously keep operating like this so we have to get our ducks in a row and then do everything that we can do and that I can do to get in front of the selectmen sooner rather than later. The only issue is, and that I wanted to get your opinions on, I think it's a more powerful meeting if we're in person. The problem is I don't know when the heck that's going to happen or when we're even going to be allowed to have that happen. So do people think that it would be better to get on a Zoom meeting or just wait it out until we can get in front of them? Well, right now, what is the maximum uh, amount of people that are allowed to meet? I don't know the answer to that. I mean, they could have had 150 at the uh, at the football field for the for the town meeting. Now, I'm, I'm being I'm being flippant and facetious with that, but I think that there's a way we could probably work it out to get these two boards in the same room. It, it might be a bigger room, but we could still do the six feet and wear the masks and and have it be. Uh, safe but also productive and in my opinion I don't know if there's any local bylaws that would stop that but I guarantee we could adhere to any CDC guidelines and make it happen no doubt about it I, then I think we should request a meeting as soon as possible and if one can't be obtained within the next month or two or four weeks then maybe have one in zoom in the next week or so or at or whenever we can meet as soon as we can 
All right. So I can send that request out to the select board. Did I hear correctly that um, Cindy Barubi retired? I do not know that. John Hassenjager, I believe, heard that somewhere. John, you're muted. You're muted. Turn your mute off, John. I hope he just got out of the pool. <laughs> I did. God's truth. I just got out of the pool. I was five minutes late. <laughs> no shirt. I Thanks, hate these John. Zoom. <laughs> Gorgeous. No, I don't know what happened. I, I, it, that's the secondhand information. I heard that uh, uh, there's another person. Who, who's the secretary to the uh, finance committee? Uh, Claire Abel, April. I heard she was let go. So. There's no um, there's no confirmation on the Cindy Barubi thing. And the only reason I'm asking is because I'm going to be sending a a note to the select board trying to get in front of them. I mean, I can send it to Salvatore, but sending it to Cindy would be the normal course of action. Well, send it to JJ. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I was told she's not there. I don't know if she retired, she was furloughed, whatever. I don't know. I don't want, I don't want to spread a rumor. Yeah, no, that's like, a, you know, it's very possibly uh, furloughed if um, with everything going on. So we'll just, sure, regardless, even if she's furloughed, if anybody sends her messages, it'll get to the right person anyway, at some point. So I'll do it like that. Um, all right, so the agenda, like I said, is light. Um, anybody have any experiences, negative or positive, with the opening of some of the restaurants downtown and anywhere that we might think that EDC might be able to be of some help? Um, or is it going pretty smoothly in all of your observations? No, well, from what I've seen, they've, they're, you know, people have either worked with the town outside or, you know, I haven't been inside yet. I think I'm going to go inside tomorrow, but I think most owners have, you know, done what they've needed to do to, to move forward. We'll see what, you know, obviously what the, the next step will be about inside dining, but what what I've seen on the outside, you know, these guys have have done a good job, and I, you know, appreciate that the town has, you know, not gotten in the way or or, or made this too cumbersome. But uh, you know, I think people are trying to move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Anyone else? I agree. I I worked with a little bit with um, Raven's Nest, and you know, back with getting his tent out there and. He seems to be doing pretty well, and he has tables out front for Tessie's. It seems to be working out pretty well, and I haven't talked to him personally, but I haven't heard anything negative, and I've seen people at all these t uh, outside tables, and so they seem to be getting used. So that's a good sign right there, and I'm sure they're all experienced restaurant people, so I'm sure they're making it work. Um, and I know Jalapenos, I did go to Jalapenos one night. Everything was fine there. We had a nice time out back under the tent. It was good. And um, I helped uh, Bobby Conrad as well try to get some outdoor dining going on a uh, property adjacent to him and everything. Ran into a little trouble with the landlord, but uh, was trying to get around that, but was not too successful. So we had to work around it. Um, but he's out, he's got some tables going. He wished he'd get out some more. He actually had a nice little dining area set up on Santander property there. And uh, his landlord interfered with that. and. Uh, so he, he had to take back a lot of tables, or actually he moved the tables out to the front of the uh, Conrad's along Route 1. His current, his, his landlord of the building he's in gave yeah. a hard time? Yes. But isn't that Santander property? Isn't that your property? No, it's, uh, it's, it's oh. actually the Goldman property, 18 feet from the building. Oh, so the little in-between spot is still the other landlord? Yes. He has tables on Santander's property, but he's not oh, allowed to put tables in the middle. He's allowed to walk over the uh, property of the plaza. Uh, 
The owner of the plaza just would not entertain taking away any spaces or taking away any free area in the plaza that would interfere with CVS's lease. In their lease, that he's not allowed to do that. He would not even go request to CVS if he could do it. And he didn't want anyone else going to request to CVS if, if somebody could do it. So it just halted, stupidly. Because I think if CVS ever found out that they're not doing outdoor dining because of CVS, I think CVS would be very, would be upset. Yeah. That they get a little tarnished on it. Not that it's their fault. I don't think they have any knowledge. I think it's just the landlord of that plaza was very uncooperative. I, w I went by Beacons. Beacons is great. They have uh, like 15 tables, I think, or 12 tables up. They have a big area, you know, it's really nice. And there's a good crowd there. Well, as of, as of, as of yesterday, you can go inside. Right. To what, 50% capacity? No, it's just six six feet apart. There's no capacity limit as long as your tables are six feet apart. Okay. Yep. Anybody know what's going on with the uh, old Westbury Farms, the breakfast place? Somebody was going to open there and then COVID hit. I heard that as well, but I do not know anything. Okay. I guess I was under the, the wrong assumption that they cleared out and a couple other people are going to clear out because they wanted to get rid of that building but i guess i'm wrong i, I thought know. that building was going to go the way gilmore's is going to go eventually i heard that um this was a while ago though um that one of the servers or wait staff um were taking over the business i'm going to revamp it and then I think COVID happened, and I'm not sure where it stands now, but that's what I heard. If that's the case, that's too bad. I hate to see that happen to somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, had an idea of moving forward with their own business and through no fault of their own. Hopefully they didn't invest any money. I'm not <laughs> sure, but I think somebody got really, somebody, one of the owners maybe got really sick, and, okay. um, and that's what I know anyway. Yeah, he had a heart attack. He had a heart attack, okay. That's too bad. So what's yeah. going on? With, what's, what about Main Street Live? Is that dead now or what? Um, I guess it's still up in the air. Um, I talked to, interestingly, I saw Jim Johnson out at um, Jalapeno's that first, one of the first nights they were open. Um, and my take on by the way the restaurant thing yeah it was really great it uh the, these guys are doing a great job and i talked to mark and i talked to ricardo and both said that the town was really great in helping them streamline this and making it happen um and really presented no obstacles so that was really good to hear that you know a lot of a lot of times people can say it and the town can say, hey, we're going to do this and this, but to get that many different committees and boards, you know, in line and thinking the same way is not easy to do. But um, both of the guys said that uh, they made it very easy, very straightforward. They didn't have any unanticipated issues. So I just wanted to make sure I said that. Um, so it's a good thing going forward. And hopefully it keeps going forward, even after all this weirdness is behind us, because what a great atmosphere though that outdoor stuff really brings uh, to the town so having said that about main street live i was talking to jim he would like us to see if we can do it and to hang on and not make a decision until we really have to make one and he kind of left that in our court as you know what is that day uh, but he'd love to see it happen. He'd still love to see concerts on the common happen in some, you know, safe way if he can do it. But he hasn't really heard from recreation on that yet. And, you know, not having heard from them at this stage of the game means that they don't have it on their schedule, obviously, because um, it would have been done and scheduled back in April. So, um, you know, he had said, look, I'd love to see this kind of thing happen if you can guys, if you guys can pull it off. So, you know, if you can hang on and see what happens and then try to work within the parameters of whatever those parameters are when we get to mid-September, um, 
you know, let's see if there's a way to do it. So I said, yeah, you know what, we'll, we can hang on as long as we can without risking any funding, obviously. So, you know, that's where my conversation with him was. What, anybody else have any input on that or anything, reason why we shouldn't do that or should, or what do you think? Well, from, from my point of view, it's a lot of work and uh, we don't have a lot of volunteers, so we're already teetering on the edge of what we got. Never mind trying to have people enforce any type of COVID regulations and stuff like that. I, I don't know how we can possibly do that. And then really, if we can't, and the boards are doing anything. They're not letting anybody file anything or process anything. At, at the town meeting, uh, I didn't speak, but I, I was very tempted. Uh, the uh, the, the MWRA extended a two and a half percent decrease in the, in the sewer rate to the communities in, in honor of COVID to pass on to the consumer. And our town administration, water department, wanted to take the two and a half percent for themselves. They didn't want to give it. I had to fight like hell to get them to give, to give what the state was offering to the consumers to give it to the ratepayers. And, uh, you know, they wanted a 7.8% increase in the water. They got it down to 4.7, but geez, I mean, some people, obviously there's people thinking, I guess if you're in government, everybody's getting their money. With I, I, I got a question, are the furlough people getting paid anyway? They're just on furlough, is that what it is? I don't know the answer to that. Because I believe, it seems like I believe they filed for unemployment. No problem, you know. But the economics, the, the people that are totally unemployed, been wiped out since since uh, you know March. Uh, they're not doing too well. Yeah, um, I don't know the, uh, the specifics on that, but I believe furloughed people are collecting unemployment if they choose to do so. Um, because they keep, and they keep their benefits and they keep their benefits yeah. that's what i thought so they're all set yeah okay well so maybe they don't feel the pressure i don't know well they're all set until july i think it is right so mark just a quick suggestion since about main street live and the uncertainty of this this group is maybe it's a time to approach the select board for uh for guidance as it centers around Main Street Live to try to get this meeting sooner than later, you know, you know, as, as, as uh, you know, as um, <clears throat> Donnell said, it's gonna be a lot of work and effort. And if, you know, what is the long-term of this of this group? And we need to know, right? In order to, to put some effort towards this and also, you know, what their feeling is if, you know, if it's just delayed or just canceled for 2020, but maybe that'll get them to pull a meeting together sooner than later. Yeah, that's a good idea, Kevin. And and also, you know, maybe there's some middle ground where Main Street Live maybe takes on a different form this year. Uh, maybe we do it in a more open space, like um, down behind uh, Town Hall, you know, mm -hmm. where we where people can spread out a little bit easier not so congested so there's a lot of things that we could right. talk about um you know have it the way we always have it don't have it at all or find some modified way to make it happen um that might be a little easier to manage per Danelle's point um mm -hmm. but then again you know the one of the real issues and Danelle that Danelle brought up is the volunteers and the help because you know it is a lot of work and if if, yeah. if the nine of us just busted it the whole time we'd be about 20 people short <laughs> so it's uh and it's tough asking for volunteers um a this late in the game and b in the current climate that we live in um yeah I mean, and i also think that i mean part of the original intent was to have the local businesses benefit to open up to be available to get people give them a shot at you know whatever I and mean, we didn't even really know i don't really know whether the restaurants and everything are going to be fully open and whether the other people could even open up if they wanted to to uh, participate in some fashion right um, 
And, and you know, and I, and I would just say parenthetically the other thing. I don't think we have to ask the permission of the board of selectmen. I don't think they have any particular omnipotent knowledge or uh, expertise to tell us what to do. I think you know, if you want to check with the board of health and talk with somebody, people who are more involved with the COVID impact, I, don't, I think that would probably be. Uh, well, I think I think every board would be involved in that discussion, but um, you know, to Kevin's point, you know, we do have to get approval from them to move forward. We have to get our licensing to move forward, our our liquor licensing, and and just the the approval to use the town land. And they they may have some ideas as to how we might be able to move forward in a safe way. And then it's up to us to decide if it's something we can pull off or not. I mean, you know. Anybody that's been through this knows this is um, this takes an awful lot of planning and um, and more importantly, it takes an awful lot of execution on the night uh, of, of the event. So, no, I don't know. In my mind, it's still up in the air, and maybe we try to do something that's more of a hybrid um, in an easier place to manage. But again, until we talk to selectmen, I don't think we can make any. They, you know, we could come up with the best idea in the world, and they might say, "No, you know what? We're not feeling it." And they might be in the right to say that because they have a responsibility to deal with what the state is telling them they can do and what they shouldn't do. And as it stands right now, um, you know, outdoor venues and outdoor gatherings, other than I guess protests, are. Um, are not advised at this time so and no one knows when that stage four is going to be allowed so you know until then i think we just work with the selectmen and see what they say and make sure we're on the same page that if it does open up and we can move forward that they've already done the homework on their end to make it happen for us. There, there was a protest in town and it was allowed they had a big march down main street well, they have to allow protests. Yeah. Unfortunately. I guess that's unfortunately for actually... for the protests. Unfortunately for um, in the situation that we're in. You know, that the whole another phone call now though. Um, you put that many people together and and then say they can't go to a football yeah. game, but they can go out in the streets of. of New York City by hundreds of thousands you know, over a couple of weeks. We'll see what happens down there you know, with their numbers. If they're, the worst thing that could happen for the government is that the numbers don't go up. Then everybody is going to be losing their minds as to why we've been stopped for so long. But anyway, that's not for us to decide. But so Kevin's suggestion about talking to the select board, I think, is the right move. Um, anybody else have any thoughts on that? I agree with Kevin. I'll go along. Agree. <laughs> it sounds like socialism, but I'll go with it. <laughs> FYI, the uh, down destination downtown group is talking about doing a uh, like an arts and crafts expo on the common, probably end of September or first week in October. That one of those Saturdays to fall in between. Walpole Day and Jarvis Harvest. Um, on when is that, Walpole Day? Huh? When is Walpole Day? Walpole Day is, I believe, September nineteenth. So we were thinking the two and uh, Downtown Live or Main Street Live would have been the eleventh, I think. Yeah. Second Friday, so whatever right. that is. That would have been the 11th. So Walpole Day is the 19th, and we were thinking the 26th, September, or October 3rd. Um, so potentially, you know, I think it's one thing when you've got a massive amount of people all huddled together in front of a stage for a band uh, versus a, a one to five type of thing in the common where people are not all at one point spot at one time you know so and and somebody brought up having some musicians there too more kind of off to the side but maybe in the gazebo there um i don't know if if it's a potential where we kind of combine walpole uh, main street live this year 
and the arts and crafts thing and just do it during the day and kind of not focus on the the beer and the drinking and everybody huddled jumping around the the uh, stage that might go off a little bit better i'm just suggesting I mean, I hear you. I, I think at this point, I'd rather keep the Main Street Live name or the, the, the spirit of Main Street Live to what it is. And, um, you know, if they want to have the art show, which is a great idea, um, and have music, there's nothing stopping them from doing that. Um, but, you know, if we're going to do Main Street Live, we've had enough history with it now when people hear that event, they expect something. So I'd rather not do the event um, than give them something that's different um, than what they're expecting. Agreed. Harry, you take you take away the beer and wine. There's no sense in doing it. It's, right. No, I know. We, we just, can't afford to do it if we take that away. It's, I just find that's going to be hard to get an approval. It's like a rock concert, you know, and those aren't happening. I get it. That's it's why I, I think it's happening. Gonna be, it's where you're going to be unlikely we're going to get it right and then you got the issue with uh you know five or six food trucks and the board of health i mean and then the serving of the beer and the, the wine and it's going to be tough i don't I, I don't see it happening well def things are definitely going to have to change between now and then if it's going to happen but right. um as if they can figure out a way to open fenway park we can figure out a way if we're motivated to do so to have main street live um, and the more it becomes, and I hate this term, so I, I apologize for using it, but the more it becomes a new normal, the easier it will be to manage. Um, people will understand that being in line for beer, you got to be six feet from the guy in front of you. Um, they are doing some uh, shows and things like that outside in New York, and you know, I don't know if we would be able to go this far, but they're, you know, literally painting grids on the field and people are six feet apart. You can have as many of your family members in the same spot, um, but that's your spot. The next spot, six feet over, the next spot, six feet over. And, you know, walking around, you still have your mask, but they kind of keep different groups apart when they're just watching the music. Is that going to work for Main Street Live? I don't know, but... You know, until we figure out what we're able to do, you know, it's kind of a moot conversation. That's why, you know, we swing back to Kevin's um, suggestion that we figure out where we are with the select board before we start trying to put plans together on something that might be moot. Hey, just a question, Dolls. I know we're not doctors or anything, but why necessarily does there need to be a second wave? Like why? Why I don't. What? 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 Presu what presumption mean? Why, why a sec Why would there be a second wave in the I, fall? I mean, again, even if there was, you know, till December, January, when people actually starting getting the regular flu. You know why? I, this doesn't seem like this is a, a virus that me needs cold or heat or whatever. It is what it is. So why would why why the fall or flu season? means a second wave of this i don't get it I, I think they're going off of historic pandemics okay why they're expecting it like with the spanish flu and other type things there's always been a second wave so i think that's kind of what the driver is on it i remember listening to a, a television thing on it and they were comparing it back to 1918 and there was a second wave then and there was another one somewhere else that also had a second wave that so I think that's why they're comparing it to past. But Harry, to your point, I'm not sure that anyone is 100% um, sure that there's going to be a second wave. I heard Fauci the other day um, talking about the NFL, and you know he said that if you know if a second wave happens, which like Danelle says, that we have history to tell us that it can happen. But at the end of his statements, he said, but I hope I'm wrong, and I very well could be wrong. Um, so do second waves happen? Yes. Do you have to prepare for it? Yes. Is it absolutely going to happen? I don't think anyone knows. 
I mean, well, was, until we get a vaccine, we may be in a first wave that just continues. So. Yeah, you're right. Although, you know, vaccines don't have to be perfect either, you know? I mean, even a vaccine only... Oh, yeah, it doesn't work on everybody. Yeah, only 49% of the people even get the vaccine, and only 42% of the people that get it, it actually works, so... Right. You now you're talking about 22 percent of the population that are actually protected with the with a flu vaccine. Well, the the vaccine is nothing more than giving people the virus. Right. That's what people don't understand is that the herd immunity. That's what has to happen. There's, they right. say that 75 percent of the people have already been exposed to it. The only issue, and, and the, those who are antibodies are protecting them, are, aren't going to get it. But if the thing. Anybody else lose him? I lost him. It's exactly the opposite. What we're supposed to do is when, when I was a kid, someone got chicken pox, the teacher would call up and all the mothers would bring the kids over to the house and everybody get exposed to chicken pox and we got it over with. That, that's what they did. The I can't imagine that's true. What do you mean? That's And then no one would get shingles. That, that's what doctors would recommend. Get your kid exposed to, to chicken pox as fast as you can. That was the way. But the herd, there's no vac. The vaccine, there's no protection. Your body is the only protection you have to the virus. Your antibodies, you've got a thousand or a million viruses on you right now. Your body protects you from them. There's nothing. The, vi the only thing, the only thing a, a, a shot gives you is they put they inject it in you, so your body builds the antibodies to what they put in you. Right. Everybody's got to be exposed. Keeping everybody apart and pretend them from getting exposed is stupid. It's just prolonging the thing. That's not solving the problem at all. You take the target people who are the elderly and you put them in a different segment and treat them totally different. But they should treat the general population, uh, you know, as a herd immunity situation, and they're not doing that. Yeah. No, I don't disagree, but, you know, that's there's a lot of people. I mean, I'm with you. I think that we should have our own personal um, decisions to make regarding it. But, um you know, having said that, a lot of people died that would still be alive right now if they didn't catch it. So it's a yep. it's a tough thing. And um, the different the biggest difference between today's pandemic and even a pandemic 20 years ago with SARS or whatnot, uh, and then way back with the Spanish flu and everything is the, how fast information travels now. And because of the, the how fast information can travel, people have the ability to mobilize. Now, I don't want to get into the politics of whether shutting down is right or wrong. It doesn't really matter. It's the way it is, but... Um, yeah, no, I mean, as far, far as Main Street Live, if the schools are shut down, we probably shouldn't be having Main Street Live. I mean, it's like in, inconsistent, totally. I mean, if you can't even have, a, you know, people meet at church or in schools. I mean... You know, you're right about that, and, you know, that's a whole different thing. Um, the fact that they're still up in the air on that makes things pretty difficult. But even if we still pull it off, you're still going to have a good percentage of people, especially the at-risk people, over 60 or whatever, or people with some health issues that aren't going to come. That might have come before because of what's going on. So you got to be aware of that too. Yeah. <clears throat> I agree. Let's have the meeting with the select board and see what they say, and and um, then we can start to at least get some goals and some, you know, kind of waypoints, if you will, you know, if we get to this date and if the state says this, or if they do this, if they don't have school, if they have school, at least we'll be on the same um, page moving forward and then we'll decide. Um, all right. The last thing, uh, we still, and I take responsibility for this primarily, but you know, we still haven't taken the time. I still haven't to start putting together that EDC mission. Um, I'm wondering, do people just want, when I say people, you know, the eight or nine of us here, do you just, do we just want the select board to tell us what they think our mission is, or do we want to have input on that? And if so, 
um, we really, you know, and again, my fault for not really pushing this, but I think we need to really kind of grindstone this and, and, and get some ideas down on paper that we can bring to them as well. So how do people feel about that? And how do you want to move forward with trying to get those ideas done? I know it's difficult when we're on zoom calls, but so it might have to be kind of like a homework type of thing, but how do people feel about that? Well, the, you know, the original mission was to provide a, a voice for the business community into town government and to uh, give uh, advice and counsel and feedback to the, to the leadership or the administration of the town from the business community on public policy and on actions of the town or, or conditions of the town or circumstances or regulations that were business unfriendly and were not uh, particularly uh, uh, appreciated. I mean, that, that was the original deal. And, I, and it's evolved from there to more, you know, in, in, in uh, a more robust role where, you know, it's a, it's a uh, feedback for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, not just for the administration, but it's, it's uh, uh, community relations with the Chamber of Commerce and so forth to kind of be uh, a promoter of uh, the community and the business environment and attract business to the town and attract tax base to the town and to do the TIFs. We kind of evolved into that. Yeah, and everything nowadays has morphed into some sort of uh, political agenda and whatnot. Um, Mark, what, what I think we need to do is go look at the last mission yep. statement that we had submitted with the selectmen. Um, I don't know if that goes back to Liz. I don't I think Liz might be the last one that submitted one or the last time we had meetings going on with the selectmen with that. I think you need to get that into our hands so that we can see it and then all of us can kind of relate to an update of it with things that have changed. Um, one of the things I was going to say before we left was that uh, I'd like to see Ashley or somebody get in touch with the two apartment complexes that are opening up downtown. I see that they're starting to advertise, they're starting to come online now and uh, kind of get an update of where they're at with their commercial space. Yeah. To see if anything's happened with that, to see if there's anything that you need help on or anything we can do to help the commercial space. Um, I think now might be the time to get involved with that because um, they are just starting to lease out their units and they're, they're at that place where they come into completion of construction. Yeah, it's a good idea. And Beth, Beth had sent me out, um, it wasn't a mission statement, but it was back with uh, Stephanie Mercandetti's time where she had done a, uh, a roundup of what they did during the year and how that lined up with their goals. And it's very interesting and it kind of, by reading it, you kind of get a feeling of what the mission was. Um, and I can distribute that. I want, Danelle, I want to, because we don't have anyone in the town on, on the call here, I'm going to ask you for your expertise when you were chair. Can we distribute documents to each other and mark up documents and then redistribute? Um, legally with open meeting laws even you know like if, if we all send out a document and everybody puts their notes down and send them back is that deliberation or is that just i don't think i think that's just taking people's notes on it and then what goes on in the open meeting is the delivery. nothing wrong with taking information it's what the selectmen do they get a packet ahead of time yeah they take that packet and they study the packet and then they come into the meeting and have the meeting and you know, go in the direction that, you know, they go in. But yeah, there's nothing wrong with distributing information for the members to come up with, info, you know, to yeah. come up with input for the next meeting. That's and, what I that's what I thought. And, you know, with planning board, we used to get these huge packets and then we'd have to discuss them at the at the meetings. But so what I guess what we should do just to make sure that we're staying in compliance is distribute whatever documents that I can come up with or that anyone can come up with um, but not go back and forth with ideas on those documents until we have the meeting. Mark, there are, there are two, that information I think is in two spaces. 
one of them is dialogue between the selectmen and the EDC about goals. Right. But then at the end of the year, um, I think the, the uh, Liz, uh, Liz used to do it, and Stephanie might have done it too as well. They do a write-up of how we match that goals that we did. But that what you were talking about there is what gets submitted into the um, into the town uh, year-end book. What do they call that? The, the the one. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah, the John. Have, what's yeah. the name of that? That's submitted. The budget book or whatever. The town report. Yeah. That page gets, report. gets submitted to the town annual report, and that's probably what you're talking about there. So I think between the that the inf the dialogue between the selectmen and what the selectmen charges with, and then what happens with the write up that goes into the annual report. If we could get two or three of those, or the last two or three that were done, then we can derive our updated one with what's happened recently in the town, with the new apartments, with COVID, with dining and outdoor dining and Main Street Live and the stuff that we weren't doing four or five, six years ago. That's a good idea. So I so have I don't, see any reason why, I don't see any reason why we can't direct Stephanie, I mean Stephanie, Ashley to do that. I'll ask her um, if she can come up with those, you know, both the mission statements and the annual report filings, you know, see if she can get two or three of each most recent. Um, I know she's, you know, even if she has one of her helpers do it, I don't care, but she would, I mean, she would have an easier time getting that stuff than we will. Yes. Um, so I'll ask her how we should proceed with that. Right, Mark, way, yeah. Mark, Brian here. I got a couple of thoughts. Sure. Um, one, on the Walpole website, um, I googled Economic Development Commission. There's a pretty long one run-on sentence, but it does, in essence, describe a general mission um, that's there. Okay. Um, two, was the EDC involved in any way in helping the businesses near Route, and Harry may know this, that are along Route 1, for parking for Patriots home games because as an RTM I did get the warrant and there were there was an article in there about uh, guidelines that would have to be met but would allow for homes to be parking some cars in there that, that had done it before um, so was EDC involved in any way shape or form of talking to those homeowners or talk, were we involved in any that way for you, Brian that's all done through the selectmen the selectmen issues is. the licensing for the parking permits had nothing to do with EDC well so last question as we look to expand our board would it make sense to see if we could find a business owner in Walpole who lives in Walpole that might want to join our board so that i mean besides yourself to know but maybe somebody that owns like one small business that maybe we could start to hear some of their perspectives of the challenges that we might be able to discuss and try to help solve so i'm just wondering we don't have that perspective from one store owner you know the, the jalapenos or whatever it is i'm just curious if it ever makes sense to reach out to someone like that and be on the board well, you could certainly in the, in the past we we had invited people from different sectors to come in and talk. We invited people from the uh, the, the used car okay. deals to come in at one point. I mean, there's nothing that would prevent if we had a program and had one person come per meeting from a, a from a, a a general merchandise retailer, or from a bank, or from a, a car dealership, or whatever. Have have people from different sectors come in and. and you know tell us how things are going and what i mean that's probably a good idea i don't know if they maybe have that's to, something harry could help. i don't know if they have to join the board we tried to pursue a few people harry yeah. did particularly helped us to pursue a few people it turns out a lot of them are so busy they just don't have the uh, the generic interest they have more of a finite interest in themselves and their own business and surviving as opposed to mm -hmm. okay thanks oh that's a that's a great idea brian and and obviously we want to try to get people that are active in the town and understand business and understand the challenges and and most importantly the the uh, each person on our list and talk to them and feed you know yeah try to and, bring feedback and the problem i think that we're going to have is because i like 
our board right now, we are, you know, we're obviously short members, but um, I like the idea of putting out a request to people that might be interested because people may not even know that this committee exists um, or how they could get involved. Uh, but the one thing we need to do, in my opinion, is not have another Staz on our hands, which, you know, he doesn't have time for crap. None of us do, but uh, it seems he has less patience for the crap than, than a lot of us do. And when you get involved in a committee that seemingly is spinning its wheels, um, it becomes less enticing, less desirable to be a part of it. Um, I think we all see the light at the end of the tunnel where, where we could have an impact. Um, so I just want to make sure that we can, you know, have that mission in place when we recruit some people so they don't get a bad taste in their mouth prior to that mission. You know, and again, if I'm overthinking it, please tell me. I mean, you know, these are just my ideas, but I would hate to have what happened to Staz happen to somebody else coming in um, that just said, you know, what am I wasting my time for on this board? And quite frankly, with Brian and, and Kevin, you know, you guys are, are the newest ones and, um, you know, the rest of us have seen what the board has done in the past. Um, and I think that's why we're being patient with it. But I, I get worried when I see Kevin and Brian because I'm like, oh, you know, what are these two going to say the hell with this? Um, so I'm hoping that you don't. But I think before we actively recruit, we ought to get our ducks in a row. Um, but that's just me. We can, I like the idea of finding small business people, um, you know, more than just one or two meetings getting their input, but actually having, you know, someone sit on the board that um, runs a small business every day. I think it's a great idea. So I'm happy to uh, work on getting you like a guest business owner every meeting, if you like. Um, there'd probably be a bunch of them that we could do that with. I think um, we gotta be a little careful on the business owners on the board per se, because if they're going to speak their mind, they're probably a little scared that they're going to get repercussions from whomever when it's come time for them to do something at their restaurant. So that's why they've kind of remained silent in a lot of different things. They're worried of that uh, blowback. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the mission statement and, and having the meeting with the selectmen, you know, you know my opinion, what my opinion has been over the last couple of years, uh, not to continue the, the charge to say that, you know, what are we really doing? What, are, what, what influence are we having? We're really still not because, you know, we're not writing briefs, we're not writing memos, we're not writing statements. So the board can actually read out loud and then give their opinion on. I'm talking about the board of selectmen. So all they see is us not agreeing with everything they say right. and then them not wanting to hear from us and again we know the elephant in the room is that our economic development person is not attending meetings but we also know that this all started when we had a little negativity regarding the affordable housing and the whole line of communication shut down from there on so more than happy to see a meeting with us and the selectmen to get over this hump and figure out how we're going to continue to work together or if we're not going to continue to work together. It's one or the other. I don't disagree. And, you know, typically when you get into political stuff, it's really not the, you know, when someone says the EDC should not be political, I, I can get on board with that a little bit. However, um, in that particular situation, I think there is an economic development um, impact on certain small businesses, which is why we got, which is why we had an opinion at all. In my, you know, we're not going to get involved in the town budget. We're not going to get involved in any of that. But um, and some people will tell us we shouldn't get involved with zoning. But I think zoning is one of the biggest things we should be involved in. Um, if they start trying to take away, uh, you know, put residential and commercial zones, um, start doing overlays, start doing anything that impacts the ability of Walpole to um, invite or maintain a positive business environment, we should be involved in. And, and, 
I hate to tell people, it's 2020. Everything's political, unfortunately, but it is. Um, well, it's not, it's not really just the political part of it, Mark. I mean, you know, you, you mentioned the budget. You know, we should have been there. Again, I was on the football field. I wasn't going to start and start debating things this Saturday. But every meeting, town meeting, I try to go up there and remind everyone that we've got a hundred million dollar budget break basically and we're spending 0.0014 percent of that on economic development on a town that is double less on commercial revenue again dedham 28 30 percent no 34 percent westwood around 32 percent us around 12 to 13 percent all of you know commercial revenue which is horrible so I don't know why we just blow that off. But again, EDC should be there at town meeting, voicing their opinion, um, voicing their opinion at the finance committee, voicing their opinion at the zoning board, all of this. I mean, that's the only way we can advocate for our business owners. And other, and other than that, nothing's ever gonna change and we're gonna keep losing ground. Danelle and John, um has that ever been the case in your history um, with the board, with this committee rather, about being involved um, as a normal course of action with the ZBA or planning board or town meeting, um, anything like that? I want to yeah, say- The reason not, I ask you to is just because of your length of time on the board. No, in, in, in the past with Liz and with um, Stephanie, they used to be in that position. They used to be involved in that all that they would go to town meetings and stuff like that they'd be they'd be getting us more information but we just don't have that personnel anymore yeah we, we we took we would take positions particularly on zoning because it affects all business and we particularly oppose when the, the town switched a lot of the commercial zoning to residential took the potential of business parks away uh we expressed opposition on that but on this current thing, I, and I'm not going to say, I don't want to say any, really anything more about it other than 30 over, there was a survey, it was 10 years ago, but over 30% of the households in Walpole have someone in the trades or in the construction business, 30%, now that was 10 years ago. But if you add all the people that are in real, realtors, even maybe uh, Kevin's wife, uh, my wife, people who are in the title business, people who are in the construction business, people who are building homes, people who are whatever, painters, carpenters. It's a major segment of our whole town. And I, and I would hypothesize that 99% of those people have no interest in the town of Walpole getting into the housing business. Okay. And I think if we, if we can't express that <laughs> uh, to these people, uh, you know, their social their social planners, whatever they are, I mean, I don't know, but I think that's that's where I'm coming from on the thing. Uh, you know, I don't think it's nothing to do with politics. It has to do with the government taking over a business sector and getting involved heavily, in picking winners and losers in the housing business and and, and doing and putting people out of business who build houses. And uh, I don't. You know, I don't think they have any role there. There's, there's, there's federal HUD programs. There's 15 of them. There's state housing programs. There's county housing programs. We have a housing authority in town. We have our own housing. We got like four layers of housing opportunities and programs and projects that people can do already without the town of Walpole inventing their own another, a second housing division to, to get involved in housing. It's just like nutty to me. Yeah, uh, with, and you know, our formal letter to the select board, you know, with our opinion on that, basically stated that. So, you know, they know where we're coming from. But again, it's um, you know, luckily. But it's not the four of us, Mark. Is my point. If you want to find out, we'll start counting people and find out how many people. Uh, this type of thing has to be a townwide vote. These three selectmen can't dictate to the whole town and, and 25,000 people what they think. 
Republicans, and none of them have any expertise in the field, about the town of Walpole becoming a housing developer. Again, I agree. I don't disagree with you there, but you know, as the Economic Development Commission, we can't. I mean, we can give our opinion. We can give our reasons. We can, well, but we can't be a, a, a an active um, campaigner for the opposite view um, under the heading of Economic Development Commission. I mean. John, you can get up and argue it. I could get up and argue it. Anybody, any one of us could, but as a commission, as the Economic Development Commission, and I agree with this part of it, we can give our opinion on it, but I don't think we're tasked to be a, um, a political uh, campaigner, if you will, of ideas. And, you know, and that's just my thought. I mean, you know, well, no, I don't, th I don't think we are tasked to them, but I object to our staff member who's supposed to be working with us on other projects being tasked there's no reason why else's point of view. Mark, there's no reason why chairman of the EDC cannot get up at town meeting and make an argument pro or con on some type of article based on what it will do to economic development. Oh, I agree with you there, Harry, completely. In fact, I was very well uh, ready to do that at this town meeting. Um, now, luckily, we gained some time because it's now going to be on in the fall. Uh, so you know, perhaps we'll do that. But again, not being an RTM, I have to get permission to speak from um, the moderator. And he always has granted me that when I've wanted to speak in the past. I spoke heavily against um, a couple of years ago that uh, and they were trying to do something in general residence where they were saying that, you know, you couldn't put multiple buildings on a single lot that were single family. You know, they wanted to make sure they were Two family or more, and and we argued against that, and 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 we uh, were successful. And um, you know, he's always allowed me the opportunity to speak, but that's not saying that he has to. Well, and and, and the other thing that's coming up is the uh, the CPA thing, because what is it called, Conservation Protection Act. So I think the selectmen, at least three of them, are all on board on pushing that through. And I correct me if I'm wrong. I don't know the numbers, but isn't it like a two percent across the board type of thing that's going to be funded and thrown into a general fund with a other like a small amount of people are going to decide on where that money's spent and what parcels of land are going to be deemed conservation and I don't know how that's going to work for economic development. What is, what that's is, called Community Preservation Act, is what it's called. But it goes part and parcel with this affordable housing being there that they're like hand in glove because if you approve them setting up affordable housing staff then the question is where are they going to get the money to start building their own housing where they're going to get that money from whenever anybody sells a house they're going to take two to three percent of your money from your house sale put it in their own pocket put it in their own uh, account so they can build up a fund to do what they want to do with the money so now is that something that the selectmen are going to have to put an article in front of town meeting? Is that going to have to get approved through town meeting? Again, it's like a two-step process, Harry. So it's like all these other things that we've been doing at town meeting recently about, you know, we're not discriminating against whatever, we're not doing this and we're diverse, whatever. I mean, these are all stepping stones going to a certain place. So. The first thing is the is the affordable housing committee itself setting it, getting it set up, allowing it. Then the second step is to fund it with the Community Preservation Act, and now you got you know you got a second housing division in town, and you got them funding everything that gets sold in town. They get a piece of the action, uh, and, and that's a tax. I don't, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, that's what that is. Absolutely. And then then people. It's not only after it'll happen, people realize what happened. They'll say, how did that happen? And why are the town of Walpole doing this? And how come the town's building housing? And what's wrong with the other housing? I mean, just, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't get it myself. Everybody wants their own little kingdom or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I, is, there, is there an article in place for that? Or is that still in the, in the thought process? I'm pretty sure it's like what, what uh, John said, it's going to be like, all right, we got the affordable housing. Now we already did that, so we have to do this. And the rest of the lemmings are going to be like, Otherwise, where's the money going to come, Harry? 
They're going to raise taxes instead of to, they're going to raise real estate taxes three uh, percent, or are they going to tax? They got to get money. You know, the government's going to go into business, so they want to. Not, now they're going to get your money to go into business. They're going to have to. Whenever you sell a house, they're going to take a percentage of the money. Yep. I mean, they're like another real estate broker on all the deals. Yeah, it'll be so. It'll be the, a tax on the resident, and they also want to tax the builders, right? Yeah. Oh, that's that, that's on top of having to build it, uh, build the units themselves too. Right. Okay, so into it's it. a cockamamie scheme. It, it, it's so just on the face of it. I mean, wait. So if a if a builder, like John, you for instance, you build a subdivision, you put in ten units. I'm retired. Well, okay. back in your day, Danelle, you, you know, you build ten units. If everything goes through the way they want, Danelle builds ten homes. One of them, he has to build affordable. And then when he sells those 10 homes, he has to pay an extra 2% to the town on each one? No, that's the resident. That's you. Even if you sell your house down on Plimpton Street or whatever it is, just because you're a general resident and you're selling your house, they're going to tax you a CPA tax that go, just because you're selling your house to right. fund their other but thing. They're not going to tax the builder that owns the house that when he sells it the first time? No, they tax him going in. Well, they they take the they take the house from. They take the house that he provides. Right. While he's building the units, they're going to tax him basically, one way or the other. He's paying into that fund, as he builds the properties. People then buy them, regardless of that project. Now, I'm selling my house. On, I'm selling my house up in North North Walpole. It has nothing to do with that project, and now they're going to tax me under the CPA tax. Well, if it goes through. Right. But the point is, there's no point in them having this thing if they can't get the money out of you to fund them to do all this stuff. And the well, question is, what do they want to do? Why do they want to do it? What's the need? Who proved there's a need? And why aren't you going to the other programs? And why don't you let the people who are professionals in the public housing and in the affordable housing business do it? Because we have 100 programs for that with state, county, federal, HUD, you know, mass housing and Walpole housing already. So what, because they just want, they want what they want. They want to set up their own little group, right. their own little preferred they, group, and, and they the want to do their little done, And as we've seen, they don't stop. They'll get shut down the first meeting, then they'll come back in the spring, and they'll fight again, and they'll get shut down, and they'll fight again, and they'll fight again, and finally they'll get it. It's just, unless town meeting changes, that's going to be what's going to happen. Well, I think obviously we need to look more into that. We have some time on it because it's not even on any kind of a warrant. So, Mark, I got to jump. I got a 630 pickup I got to do. Yeah, well, I got to jump too. So um, I'm going to get those. I'll get those for I'll try to get as much documentation from Ashley as I can. And I'll distribute it to everybody. And I'll send out an email about what will be at the next meeting. And we'll discuss that um, that stuff. And I'll update everyone after I hear back from the select board about when they want to meet and when they think we can meet, okay? Um, I just need to have a uh, motion uh, to adjourn the meeting. Someone want to make that? I'll move to adjourn. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank All you. right, everybody. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. And sorry Thanks. about last week. Thanks, and, uh, All right. Be safe, everybody. Bye. Thanks.